Okay. All right, so again, it is my pleasure to honor you, to welcome you to uh, Purpose Beyond the Pain webinar this evening, March 28th, 2023. Um, this is the, the third in the series of the webinar that we hold on a fairly regular basis, two to three times in a year. So um, it's a joy to have you here today. Right, so some housekeeping. Um, we would like you to stay muted through the presentation. Uh, this webinar will be recorded, and that's why we would like you to stay muted as you come in. Uh, there will be ample opportunity for discussions and to ask questions at the end of the presentation. Now, we would like to know where you are calling us from this evening. So I'm going to put in the comment box, the, um, the link in a few minutes, I'm gonna put in the comment box, the link, and we would like you to tell us where you are calling us from, where you're joining from this evening. Okay. All right, in a minute we will have that. In just a minute, we want to put that in the in the comment box. All right, let me stop sharing so that we can add that into the comment box. Just stop the share. Right. Okay. Okay, so if you check in the comment box, in the chat, sorry, yeah. Okay, the link is in the chat. You should see it in the chat. The first one, um, purpose, the number one link there. Please click the link and tell us where you are joining us from this evening. Okay, we'd like to see where you come, we're joining from. So I'm gonna go and see, just put the city and the country. We want to know where our friends are joining us this evening. So if you just click that link and then answer the question, we will be able to see where you are. So I'm waiting to see, just put your city and the country. So um, let's see. Let me share the screen and see that. Okay. All right. We can't All see. All right. We can't see. We're waiting We're to waiting. see the city. All right, Nigeria. Yo, we got Nigeria, we got Dustina. Uh, Castina said, where is Dosima? Can you let us know which country that is? So we got um, Castina State, 
right? Good. We got Akure State in Nigeria. We got um, Ondo State. Yeah, keep them coming. We've got United Kingdom. Voila. Okay, we got a name. Okay, tell us where you're calling from. Tell us where you're calling from. We got Lagos, we got Lagos, Nigeria. Please keep at it, keep at it, keep sharing your country and your city, your city and your country. Let me give one more minute for that. Your country, your city and your country. Let's see. Nigeria is talking, <laughs> United Kingdom. I oh, know Geneva will not be left out. <laughs> All right. Okay. Very good. So we have Geneva, Switzerland. We have Lusaka. Welcome. We have Zambia. Welcome. Great. Thank you. Good to see where you are calling from. Now I would like you to um, go to the next question. So we're going to refresh that. And um, just go to the next question. Okay, let me come out of here. All right, so we got all of that on. So let's go to the next question and tell us what painful experience have you have you heard what have you experienced? We want to know what painful experience that you have endured, something that inflicted pain on your heart. Can you just write it? Um, just, you can write as many as you want. Um, something that happened to you that inflicted a wound on your heart. Can you just share that with us this evening? Just. It's anonymous, so you can share as many as you like. Okay. Go, we're waiting, hurtful. Okay, we don't know what hurtful, what that is. So please share with us what are the painful experiences that you have you know, endured that inflicted some, I mean, I hurt a deep wound in your heart. You should have, the, it's the same link. Just refresh it and you can then um, bring it up. We're waiting. Yeah, it will be anonymous. Yeah, it, it's not going to show where it's anonymous. It's not going to show your name in any shape or form. We just want to find out what you may have experienced if you are willing to share that with us it's anonymous childlessness okay we got another one um i think the hotful we don't know what ends that let's have more let's have a few more just to be sure that those who are here tonight um will you know have experienced something that they may be able to resolve or find solution to as you participate in tonight's webinar. So can you share some more? I just give, okay, good. Hey, uh, eight months deliver, uh, okay. I can't seem to be able to, uh, left for, left half for one year. Okay, there seems to be a lot here. Loss of mom, okay. Um, false accusation, uh, friend betrayal, aha. Stuff are coming in. Okay, okay. Any more before we go on? So we know that there are people on this platform tonight who have had some painful experience that something that really hurt them. Divorce, yeah. Okay, right. Thank you. Okay, seems more. Um, yeah. False accusation, friend, Bridget. distrust from cheating on repentant ill attitude. Okay. Or, oh, oh, you cannot hear me. Um, can you all hear my voice? Okay, thank you very much. So I'm going to stop sharing that now and then we go on. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So we got that. 
Now we will, you can all hear me. Very good, very good. Thank you. So let's go on. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, um, this um, webinar is being recorded and there will be ample opportunity for you to ask questions when we finish. So for the moment, we would like you to stay muted. Thank you very much. Okay, so we've been able to look at um, some of the painful experiences that you have heard. Now, the next thing that I would like to ask you for is number two question is, how have you dealt with your painful experience? So we're going to put the link in the comment box again. What did you do to deal with your painful experience? What did you do to ad address it? So we're gonna share that in the, um, in the comment box, so um, yeah, it's going to be in the in the chat in a moment, so that you can answer the second question. Okay, in a moment, it's going to be there. Let me stop sharing so that you can have that. So we'd like you to share with us again. What did you do to address that painful experience that you have had to endure? So the link is coming up. Uh, please mute yourself as you come in. Thank you very much. We appreciate it if you could mute yourself so that that way um, it will not go into the, into the recording. So here we are. The second link is here. Just share with us before we get into the meat of today's presentation. Uh oh, we want that to go to everybody, not just to everybody in the meeting. So here you are. So please click this link and share. What is that? What did you do with it? What did you do with that experience? Just share with us what you did with that experience. Okay, so I'm gonna share the, um, my screen and see what questions, what did you do to address it? Let's see what we're gonna see. So we just want to do this quickly before we get into today's presentation. What did you do to address that painful experience? So let's look at it. Anything coming in? Um, I haven't seen anything yet. Let's see. Can you? All right. Did counseling, okay, saw a therapist. Um, my divorce is still very fresh. I don't know what to do, okay. Did, yeah, so I can see, I don't know where to start. Okay, okay, uh -huh. I have apologized, I have prayed. Um, I don't know where to start. All right, so we can also see again, several, um, yeah, so we can see again, therapy, ruminate, learn test before trusting. Very good. I sought the Lord. I spoke with a friend. Very good. Thank you very much for sharing. So we are surely in the right place. All right, then. So let's go on with the presentation. Thank you very much for all to all those who participated. I appreciate that. Okay. All right. Let me introduce myself briefly. My name is Dr. Irene Olumese. Um, I'm, uh, I hold uh, a certification um, as a trauma coach with the International Coaching Federation, ICF. 
I'm a fifth informed and transformational coach. I'm a trauma specialist, trauma informed care specialist. And I'm also an integrated family and couple, um, couples therapeutic counselor. That means I work with couples and I work with families um, in resolving their experiences. And all the things that I do include, <laughs> I am a lung transplant survivor. It means that um, I had a chronic respiratory disease. I'm gonna share that story as we go on. So I survived lung transplant and I am a bilateral amputee. Yes, two legs have been um, amputated below the knees. So why are we here today? I am hurting, I can't let go of the pain. The reason, I'm gonna share with you the reason for the seminar, webinar, why it has become necessary to do this, why we felt it necessary to address this subject, what we hope to accomplish during this seminar, and what you will benefit from this class. All right. So the reason for this class, for this webinar, the desire to let go of past hurts and painful experiences is one of the most common reasons my clients give me when they come to, oh, to my God. sessions. They have been hurt. They have been wounded by life experiences and something has happened to them and they can't seem to let go of that pain. I've had that more times than I can count. But the truth of the matter is that pain is unavoidable in this world that we live in, this fallen and broken world that we live in. Hurtful experiences are bound. Some of them are occasioned by the actions of others. And some of them may be consequent of our own actions, our own decisions. Life will happen. It is not a matter of if, it is simply a matter of when. Why? Because we live in a broken world where people do hurtful things to one another. So we will all experience pain and even suffering at one time or the other. Every single person that I know or have come in contact with have experienced hurt to varying degrees, but none of us will get through life with us cost. There's absolutely any one of us. And I'm sure that if I actually try the Mentimeter again and ask if there's anybody in this space today, anybody who has joined us today, who has never been hurt, who has never experienced pain, I'm sure that there would be absolutely nobody who has not had one hurtful experience or one painful experience or the other. The question is, what next? When we experience pain, when we experience hurt, when things happen to us that we did not ask for, things happen to us that we did not expect or neither did we plan it, what will we do? What next? What next? All right. Okay, let's continue with the reason for this class. We may not have control over what happened to us or may still be happening to us. Some of us are still right in the heat of our painful experiences. Some of us are still in that space where we have been hurt, right? We don't have control over what has happened to us, or it may be still happening to us, but we do have control over how we choose to see that experience and how we respond to it, right? So there are things we have control over. We don't have control over what happened to us, but we sure do have control over how we choose to see that experience and how we choose to respond to it. Now think about one painful experience that you have had to endure. Think about the pain that you are carrying in your heart in this moment. I just want you to pause and consider, what are you hurting from? What is hurting you? 
if you have a sheet of paper in front of you, you may want to write it down. And my next question to you is, are you bearing this burden alone? Are you bearing this burden alone? All right, let's go on. So that's why we are here. What do we hope to accomplish in this webinar today? The purpose of this webinar is to help you discover why and how you can, exp you can express your pain. Please stay muted. We really would appreciate it if you can stay muted. Thank you. So we want to discover, help you discover why you should express your pain and how you should express it in a way that will ultimately benefit you and others around about you. That means finding a healthy way to express that hurt, that pain that you are feeling. This class is biblically based and faith informed. When I introduced myself earlier, I mentioned that I'm faith informed trauma transformational coach, which means that I use biblical principles as a foundation to the work that I do. You will find scriptural references throughout the scripture, which provides an anchor for the transformation that you will experience if you correctly process your pain. This class is also based on the principles of trauma-informed care. I mentioned again at the beginning that I'm a trauma care, trauma informed care specialist. I went for training in how to help people to manage trauma. And that's what qualified me to be a trauma coach. And then beyond that, I also heard training in transformational coaching, um, including a certification. All right. So, my desire is to help you choose how you respond to pain. I help you to begin to the process of transforming your pain into something that is purposeful and life impacting. And for those who have been following me for any length of time, you will know that my, my mantra is don't waste your pain. And I will also tell you that your pain it will, it will be in vain if you do not transform it, if it does not serve as a gain for others. So there is the possibility of transforming that pain, that hurt into something purposeful and life impacting. But of course, that means that we are, first of all, embarking on the healing journey. So what would you benefit from this webinar? In this, the changes caused by life's painful and traumatic experiences are inevitable. When something happens to us, it changes us. It changes us from the inside and it can change us even to the outside. Now, these experiences are inevitable, but the transformation that we can experience because of what has happened to us is a choice. And today, I, my desire is to bring you to that place where you can make that choice to transform your pain into something that is significant and meaningful. In this class, I would share with you lessons that I have learned with my over 20 years of theory and painful ordeals with chronic diseases and other life challenging circumstances. I will share with you how you can express your hurts in a healthy way and purposefully move forward beyond your painful experiences by helping you change your perspective to pain. Hopefully, I will show you that it is, it is possible to transform your painful experiences to life impacting purpose. And this, the, 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 the title of this webinar and the, 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 the uh, ministry that informs it the, is purpose beyond the pain. That means it is possible. We believe that it is possible to find purpose beyond the pain. And I'm a living proof that that is possible. Again, for those of you who are just joining us, 
Welcome to Purpose Beyond the Pain webinar. You can put in the chat box where you are joining us from, your city and country. We would like to get to know you better as we go on. All right. So what is the goal? What is the goal? To help you shift your mindset. That's number one and your perspective about the hurtful circumstances that you have experienced or may still be experiencing. We're not denying the fact that something happened to you, but we, what we say is, what are we gonna do with what happened to you? Remember the theme is, I am hurting. I can't let go of the pain, what next? So one of what can happen next is for you to have a shift in your perspective about pain, to point you in the direction where you can experience a reorientation and a transformation towards positive possibilities. We don't stay in the place of pain. We don't want to stay in the place where life happens to us. We want to go beyond it. The another goal is to show you that it is possible to overcome that painful experience that created that deep hurt in the inside of you. And it is possible to experience a transformation to wholesomeness so that you can move forward. We don't want to stay where life happens to us. We want to move forward. We want to go beyond it to find, leave an impact for life, a resource for life, a purpose for life. And I will also share with you, by the time we're wrapping up tonight, other resources that are available to you for you to experience and accomplish these goals that we have um, defined here. All right, I'm hurting. What does this mean? What exactly is all of this about? When we feel hurt, it can be a really painful experience. <laughs> Believe me, I have been there. It can feel like a punch in our guts or a knife to our back. I have had an experience that made me feel like I was stabbed with a hot knife at the back. I mean, it hurts us. We feel literally feel ourselves reeling from the pain. We may not be able to see it on the physical, but on the inside, we are literally bleeding. Our hearts are sore, wounded. Somebody or something has punched us below the, be, 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 below the belt. It hurts. You double over. You find yourself weeping in the night, doubled over, wondering if you will ever be able to go beyond this pain. And sometimes those life experiences that brings this on are irreversible. When we see the death of a loved one, a broken relationship, hurtful, ash, you know, and harsh words, the people who spoke those words to us can't take it back. And so if they can't take it back and it has affected us so deeply, what are we going to do with it? Believe me, none of this feeling is enjoyable. I did not endure it. I knew what the pain of losing both legs. I've known the pain of living with chronic respiratory disease. And I'm gonna share a bit with you as we go on. We might replay what caused us to hurt over and over and over and over. It, it's, it's as if we are watching an unending movie of pain, of sorrow. We're just there in the dark room just watching what happened. And sometimes we're actually talking about it in a place that is not quite safe, just rehashing and rehashing and rehashing. And rehashing is like rehearsal. We are rehearsing over and over again what happened to us. And as we continue to do that, we are deepening the hurts and making that hurt fester. Sometimes we try to hide away. And sometimes it feels as if you want to disappear from the surface of the earth where nobody can see how much you're hurting, how much you have been wounded. But you know that it, this in itself does not make our pain go away. 
Hurt is produced from our painful and traumatic experiences. Yet when we suffer trauma, something that inflicts deep wounds on us, hurts can be produced from that. Deep pain from neglect, from abuse, from harsh criticism, hurtful words, being there, know what it feels like to, 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 to experience hurtful and harsh criticism. But the truth is that hurting people hurt others. Broken people will break others. We who are hurting, we're likely to hurt somebody else if we don't heal from our part. We who are broken are likely to break other people if we don't heal from our brokenness. And the truth is that those who have hurt us, those who have wounded us, are most likely have been wounded and broken and never had the opportunity to heal from their place of pain and hurt. And so when we don't heal, we break other people, we hurt other people. So what next? The trials, the failures, the painful experiences of life can break us. And it is tragic. This happened to us that spins our world on its axis. It is tragic. Experiences happen to us that break us to smithereens. It is tragic. It is painful. It is hurtful. However, the greatest tragedy of all is to remain broken, is to remain in that place where life happens to us. That is the greatest tragedy of all. The greatest tragedy of all is never healing and rising up again from where life happens to us. But thank God we have this truth that God can use the painful experiences that wound us to build us up, to strengthen us, and to bring beauty to our lives. I mean, living proof that the experiences that broke me, the experiences that wounded me, I have survived them and I have become the stronger from it. I got to know God in a better way through those experiences. And it can be the same for you. And I've been able to use that experience to come here tonight and be a conduit of hope and encouragement to you as well. All right. The problem with unresolved hurt, when we do not deal with the hurt, when we do not resolve them, what happens? The deep hidden wounds in our hearts and in our souls they become bigger and they begin to fester. It can lead us to self-hate. It can lead us to addictive behaviors, so many of them. It can lead to challenging relationship issues. We find it difficult to relate with other people or even financial problems as well because in the place of hurt, our addictive behavior can cost us a lot of money. Challenging relationship issues, porcupines, it's difficult to occupy the same space with porcupines. They will wound you. It's difficult to occupy the same place with broken people who have not healed. They will, they will break you, they will hurt you with their brokenness. And so if we, are, if we have not healed from what happened to us, if we're carrying the brokenness of our hearts around, we're likely to have challenges in our relationship because people don't understand what we're going through. And we ourselves have can't even, um, you know, really explain to others what we're going through. And because of our reactivity, the reactivity of our emotions, we will tend to hurt other people as well. We will also suffer emotional exertion from wearing a mask and pretending that we are okay when we are not. Many of us have a mask that we put on when we come outside just to make people believe that all is well. Meanwhile, beneath the surface, we are wounded, we are hurting, we don't talk about it because we have not found a safe place to talk about it. And, you know, 
trying to be two persons at the same time is, is, is really exhausting. You want to show the world that all is okay, but then you come back into your inner closet. You know that you're wounded, you're hurting, and all is not okay. And so it is really exhausting trying to pretend that all is well when all is not well. So there, why do we need to seek help? The truth is that there are no quick fixes to emotional hurts. You can't snap your finger and it is gone. You can prophesy the heat onto, it, onto, onto existence. You need to do the work that it takes, the work that it requires for us to be able to deal with emotional works, emotional, emotional hurts. And um, sometimes it's not something we can do on our own, all right? We need to seek help from others. And you have to go through the process of healing to get better. If you have a physical wound, you know that you have to go to the doctor. I mean, let's, let's use an example. You are walking along, you fell, you fractured a, a, a limb, you're gonna go to the doctor and you're going to give that, um, that broken leg or broken arm or whatever is broken an opportunity to heal. And if you have a medical diagnosis, you're going to go through a healing process. It's the same thing with wounds in our souls. It's the same thing with wounds in our heart. We need to go through the process of healing to get better. If your emotions are sick and you are wounded in the inside, you cannot experience wholesomeness and the freedom unless you allow yourself to heal, unless you seek help so that you can heal. Another truth that we must bear in mind is that it is difficult to do it on our own strength. By our own strength, we cannot accomplish this emotional healing process. And like I mentioned earlier, we can hide behind many masks. And there are several versions of the mask that we can hide behind to make it look as if we are okay. Perfectionism, our accomplishments in other areas of our lives, we project that forward. However, they don't get rid of our pain. I have worked with a number of people who come out as, oh, perfectionists. They always like things to be this way, this way, this way. But when you begin to unfold the layers, you begin to peel back the layers, you begin to peel back the layers, there is an unresolved hurt. There is an unhealed wound that is driving them to seek perfection from other people. The wounds will manifest in destructive behavior. When we don't heal, when we allow the wound to fester in our hearts, it manifests in destructive behavior. Remember, the Bible tells us that he heals the wounds of every shattered heart. The God is close to the brokenhearted and he heals their wounds. God wants to heal the wounds of every shattered heart. So, if God wants to heal your wounds, it means that healing and recovery are definitely possible. We all deserve to find freedom and healing in this life. And the process of healing requires the hard work of recovery. I mean, I have had several health issues in my life. I've gone through several surgeries. I have scars from surgeries crisscrossing my heart. And I have scars from wounds inflicted by others on my heart. And I know it takes a hard work to recover. But the good news is that it is possible. You need the support of people who understand trauma and the deep hurts it can inflict on you to help you through the healing process. And there are many people around now who are trauma specialists available to help people in their healing process. All right, thank you for joining us. Uh, those of you who are just joining us, 
uh, who, you, who missed the opportunity to introduce yourself, please share in the comment box in the chat where you're joining us from tonight, your city and your country. We just want to know who is with us tonight. Thank you. Now, one critical step in healing, in recovering, is that you will need to surrender that pain that you have buried deep in the inside of you to God. And the good news is that he is patiently waiting for you to trust him with your pain. Remember I shared at the beginning that I am a faith infirmed trauma transformational coach. Everything that I do in my work of therapy, in my work of trauma, is also anchored on the foundation of God's word because I believe that that gives a solid foundation for healing and for recovery. Remember the word of God says, I know the plans that I have for you. They are not for evil. They're not for hurt. They are for good to bring you to a perfect and expected end. A translation says to bring you to a place where you can have a future filled with hope. So hope is available to you. It is possible for you to heal from that painful experience. All right. Trauma, what is trauma? You've heard me talking about traumatic experiences. We've talked, you know, hearts coming from traumatic experiences. So what exactly is trauma? Let's run through this quickly. Trauma is anything that happened to you that overwhelms your capacity to bear it. It's life, circumstance that happened to you that overwhelms your capacity to bear under it. Yes, a lot of things happen to us on a day-to-day -day basis that we just can brush off, that we just can deal with. But when we're talking about traumatic experience, we're talking about something that happened that overwhelmed our capacity to bear it, to deal with it. For example, I was, you don't know, I had a client who um, for several years when she was a teenager, someone spoke a word to her and that word latched itself in her heart. It hurt her deeply. A person told her that she will never amount to anything. And from that moment on as a teenager, she, that was the definition of her life. Because a person in a position of authority, somebody of significance in her life, told her she would never amount to anything. As she went through life, it, it, it's like she had become ready to see everything she set her hands upon to do to fail. Because this has formed our, perspe our perspective to life, our, her mindset. So she had suffered from something that overwhelmed her capacity to deal with it. She did not have the opportunity to find a safe place where she could share it and begin a healing process from, from it for several years. She got married and got into marriage with the mindset that, you know, nothing good can ever happen to her. She cannot amount to anything good. So even as a mother, she still struggled that she can never be a good ma ma mother. As a wife, she felt that she could never be a good wife. And this issue so tormented her until she eventually came in for counseling. And that was where we discovered that it all started with that word that was said to her that she did not have the capacity to deal with at that young age. And for over 15 years, that word followed her. So for her, that abuse, abusive, hurtful word was a trauma that overwhelmed her. A traumatic event involves a single experience or an enduring, repeated or multiple experiences that can overwhelm an individual's capacity to cope or integrate the ideas or the emotions that are involved in that experience. If somebody suffers from a chronic uh, diseases, something, a long-term disease, this can be a repeated, something that is happening over and over and over again. It is enduring. It is not going. 
If you're in an abusive relationship, there will be multiple experiences and repeated experiences in that relationship that will keep overwhelming you. And trauma can be just one time event that overwhelms you. It can result also from childhood abuses, neglects, undergoing repeated medical intervention, like I mentioned earlier, accidents, natural disaster, witnesses act, witnessing acts of violence, especially within the home, grief, loss, and intergenerational events. Trauma in itself inflicts emotional wound and affects self-esteem. The lady that I was sharing our story earlier, she lost confidence in herself. She lost her self-esteem. A feeling of worth was eroded by that hurtful word. So continuing. So traumatic events will cause us physical and emotional pain. The impact of that trauma can be subtle, it can be insidious, and it can be outright destructive. Traumatic experience is not something we often talk about or we are readily willing to admit. Many of us bury our traumatic experience below the surface, but nothing that we buried beneath the surface ever goes away. It sits there and it is festering, and at one point or the other, it will find a means of expression. So emotional wounds, those hurts caused by our traumatic experience, can leave us with depression, loss of appetite, uncontrolled and inappropriate, deep anger, deep-seated resentment, lashing out at others. If you recall, I mentioned that we cannot share the same space with a porcupine, somebody who is always lashing out. Uncontrolled discouragement and sorrow, feeling of helplessness, hopelessness, worthlessness. Let me say that again, a feeling of helplessness, hopelessness, and worthlessness, excessive irritability, oversensitivity about the past, little tolerance for others, and self-hate. These are the things that hurts that we don't deal with can produce in us. So we've looked at trauma, let's look at pain. All of this relates to our hurts. The pain could be emotional, could be physical, could be mental, could be psychological. And there are many different reasons for pain. It can be self-inflicted. It can be caused by unexpected tragedies like accidents. It hurts us. It can be caused by the behavior of others. Most of the time, the kind of hurts and pain that we see um, in, my, in my space where I work and with emotional issues are pain that are caused by the wrongful action of others. Somebody has done something that has deeply wounded us. Pain can come from mental and emotional trauma. Sometimes our painful experiences can be divine tests. Job in the Bible is an example of a painful experience that actually was a divine test. Pain is a signal that something is wrong and needs to be addressed. When the hurts in your heart produces such intense pain, something needs to be done. Emotional pain originates from non-physical sources. There's no wound on your body, but there is wound on your heart. You know it, you feel it, and it can be excruciatingly painful. It can result from regrets, from wrong, that there may be wrongful action on your side, wrongful choices that you have made. It can come from grief. It can come from loss. It can be intense and so intense that it affects other spheres of your life. Emotional pain can impact both a physical and mental health. See, while there may not be physical evidence of your pain, it can actually affect you physically. It affects your composure. It affects your, your visage. You know, the people can see on your face that something has happened to you. And of course, it can, your mental health is at risk you know, when you have been wounded and hurt in that place. So painful pain, hurts, griefs, can come from diverse experiences that throw people into the darkness of despair. 
It can come from shattered relationships, loss of loved ones, loss of a long after, sought after dream. For example, as one of you wrote childlessness as part of the painful experience that you're going through, you long sought after a child. It's a desire that has remained unfulfilled and it can cause us emotional pain, um, especially when we, it is not well managed. Traumatic ab ab abuse, the abandonment that leaves you broken and hurtful words from significant people in our lives. So when you're hurting from your painful experience, it can leave you feeling empty, without purpose, alone and isolated. You feel that nobody knows the troubles I've bear, I have borne. Nobody knows my sorrow. You all know that song. It makes you feel alone. It makes you feel vulnerable. And that vulnerability is as a result of the raw wound that is deeply embedded within your soul. You feel hopeless, you feel hopeless. You don't know what to do. And that leads me to anguish in the soul. That's what hurts in our soul can result to. When pain is extended and grief, intense sorrow and suffering happens to us, it leads us to anguish in our soul. We are hurting deep inside. Life circumstances may make us groan in agony. If you read the Psalms, you will hear many of the agonizing pain of David when he was, you know, in pain over what has happened to him. His, uh, his master chasing after him to kill him. His son wanted to kill him so that he can take over his throne. So many things happened to him that made him agonize. It hurts. Jesus himself experienced deep sorrow. He says that, you know, the Bible tells us that at the garden of Gethsemane, he, 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 he prayed until sweat would break him forth like blood from him. It is a struggle that can go on for an extended time. If we don't deal with it, it can stay with us for decades. I have worked with clients who have borne this pain, this anguish in their soul with for decades, not one, not one year or two years, we're talking about 20, 30 years, and it continues to fester in the inside of them. And of course, when we have such festering emotional wounds, it can trigger anxious thoughts and agitation. And when we begin to speak it, they speak so loudly that we don't even hear any other voice. Who can experience pain, trauma, suffering? Every one of us. No one is immune. No one gets a free pass. At least 70% of the population that we studied has experienced at least one traumatic experience. So that means that it is pervasive. Everybody has their own story to tell. What are normal reactions to hurtful hurts? Of course, nobody wants pain. We ask, why me? Why, why, have I, why do I have to be the one to go through this experience? We want to avoid it. We want to get rid of it. We want to run from it. We want to numb it if we can. Just kill it. We just want to, rather than, we, all I'm mentioning does not mean deal with it. We're talking about getting rid of it, running away from it, numbing it. But the question is, what if we, fa we face what happened to us and we look at that pain eyeball to eyeball and find out what we <laughs> can discover from it? Remember, we are not fatalistic. We do not go looking for things to hurt us. But when things has happened to hurt us, we want to be able to look at it and see what we can make from it. So the good news is that God cares about your pain. He cares about the anguish in your soul. He looks into your soul when you are troubled and he wants to soothe your pain. It's just so, it's just so reassuring to know that you're not doing this journey alone. You may have 
specialists to work with you. You may have therapists to work with you. You may have trauma coaches like me to work with you. But just the fact that you know that you're not alone in this journey and that God is present with you to heal you, to soothe you, is so comforting. It's so comforting. And I know that he gives the strength for each moment and the wisdom to know what steps to take. In our life's hardest times and deepest pain, we need to reorient our thinking to understand that God is unflinchingly working on our behalf to work all these things together for good. He is able to bring something out of our, the most excruciating, painful experience. All right. So I'm glad to note that there are exit signs from a place of pain. Life has happened to you. You are hurting. You have not been able to let go of the pain. But the truth is, there is an exit sign. The mystery has an end if we know how to access the help that we need. The profit of pain costs offers you a powerful tool that can help you to see possibilities of embracing a wholesome and vibrant life beyond your pain. And we're gonna share the link to the Profit of Pain course in the chat box for those who want to register for the course. And I will share more about it as we go on. But that's what we do at the Profit of Pain course. We'll help you to begin that process, that journey of healing, and that journey of transforming your pain to purpose, to power, and to profit. So what do we do with pain? I'm just going to run through this as quickly as I can so that we can then um, get to conversations about this. First, you need to acknowledge the pain. You need to acknowledge and admit that something happened to you. And that what happened to you overwhelmed you. And therefore, it's valid. Your pain from your painful experience is valid. It matters because you experienced it. It may be com complicated. It may be difficult for you to make sense of it or to get others to understand it. But that does not diminish the fact that something happened to you that shifted your world on its axis. And because it happened to you, it requires attention. And suppressing that pain deep within you may appear to be your easiest option. And I mentioned earlier, that tends to hurt us the more. When our pain comes from deep and scary spaces, we don't want to talk about it, or we don't even want to admit that it exists. But we must acknowledge the pain if we're going to be able to deal with it. When we avoid a traumatic and painful experience, it affects every sphere of our lives. So acknowledging your pain is an essential step to the healing. Again, when we try to avoid our pain and our hurts, it takes us to isolation. When we acknowledge the pain, then we can begin the work to get through it. We begin to learn how to understand our feelings. We begin to learn how to deal with our emotions and how to respond to them appropriately. Now, deciding to walk through your pain can be a big and frightening decision because you have you're going to face difficult memories from your past. And that is why it is critical and essential that you work with an experienced professional that can help you to learn how to face that situation in a healthy way, in a way that will not further trigger you, in a way that will not um, take you to a place of despair. All right. Okay. So when we acknowledge the pain, then we express the pain. Why should we express that pain? Because we want to get it out. We acknowledge that it is there and that we can express it. Because whether we have it controlled or not, we are actually expressing that pain. Because you, you, when it is not controlled, when the expression of the pain is not controlled, when it is not under, uh, uh, when it is not 
surrounded by encouragement, when it's not surrounded by tools that can help you to deal with it, you will also hurt other people and continue to hurt yourself. So we want to take that, that expression in a controlled manner, because when we don't take it in a controlled manner, it can be a wild horse that can lead us to places of destruction. Expressing your pain without harming you and others around you is very important. And this is one of the things that you can learn from a professional. Avoidance and inability to express our pain will keep us stuck, confused, and unable to go forward. Of course, we need to find a safe place where we can express that pain and with the right support. And that's why I mean that sharing out with others, you know, experienced people, in a safe place, we keep us from isolating. It will keep us from the loneliness that comes with the experience. And it will also remind you of God's presence with you. We can do that with trustworthy people who have the capacity, the expertise, the experience, the skill to support you. A professional counselor, a minister, a mentor, a coach, a therapist, and part of the tools that they will use to help you will be journaling, among other things. So it is important for us to seek professional help. We need help to let go of past hurts. But the truth also that I want to share with you this evening is that we can find reasons for gratitude and meet our painful experiences. Please mood. We can find reasons for gratitude, grief, and gratefulness can share the same heartbeat. And gratitude is one of the tools that can help us in uh, when we begin our journey to healing. So we process the pain. If we don't process the pain, we can heal from it. Pain is a raw material. We need to process what happened to us. And the, 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 the good news also is that the healing process from a traumatic event, from what happened to you, is not only for you alone. All the people around you will benefit. They will, you, you, they will benefit from your healed, wholesome person. Your loved ones deserve the best version of you. And you cannot arrive at the best version of you if you're still hurting if you're not healing from what happened to you. And the consequences of not processing our past and present pain is that they find a way to sneak into our future. They begin to dictate our current reality and direct our future. And I think that is too much power to give what happened to us. Yes, what happened to us is painful, but we cannot give them the power to continue to control our lives to continue to direct our future and of course many of our painful experiences are wasted because we do not process them and learn from them a couple of weeks ago I did a live video on IG and Facebook and I was talking about learning lessons from our past painful experiences. If you follow me on IG or on Facebook, you will find that live video there. And if you do join our, our group, Purpose Beyond the Pain on Facebook, you will also find it there. Now, pain in its raw form will not benefit you or anyone around about you. You see, adversity and afflictions can process you on the flip side, to become gracious, to become compassionate, if you allow it. What happened to you can actually make you better and not bitter. When we don't process it, we become bitter. When we process it, we become better. And these are some of the lessons you will be learning at our Profit of Pain course, how we process the pain to become better, how we turn the raw material of our pain into something that can produce something significant and meaningful. The process of refining and purifying happens only 
in that furnace of affliction. The hard times and adversity, they test the essence of who we are. They will reveal the fine qualities of our character. And truly, we can reframe the pain of our past events as opportunities to see God do his work of healing, the work of restoration in our lives. It becomes a growth opportunity. There is growth that can happen in the place of our painful experience. Healing from the pain is what we do in the profit of pain cast. And healing, emotional healing, is a process. It is a very personal process. So your healing journey is designed for you. No one, no one cup fits all because it's determined by what you have gone through what you have experienced. It gives you the opportunity to allow God to deal with you and your painful experience, what hurt you, what happened to you in his own way and his own time. But the truth, friend, is that God did not create you and I to bear emotional wounds and baggages. And many of us are dragging with us the pain of the past. We're dragging with us the pain of the past. And this is something that we need to lay down. It's something that we need to lay down. Indeed, it is a double tragedy for us to have gone through a painful experience and not get something out of it, not mind something out of it. Okay, I think I went too far. Right. So it's a personal healing process. It's a personal journey. And there is no one cap fit all. You can transform your pain. You can repurpose your pain. What happened to you that hurts you, that wounded you, can produce something meaningful, something significant and of eternal value. Your pain indeed can be transformed to purpose, to power, and to profit. All right. So. Okay. It is only when we reconcile, reframe, and release the past that we can move forward in God's bigger plan for our lives. Your past does not need to direct your present reality. It does not need to dictate your future if you let it serve a purpose of refining your character. So what happens if we don't process and heal from our pain? <laughs> it can bring an overwhelming sense of guilt. It brings condemnation that chains us to the, past, to the past. And those who continue, who have experienced trauma tend to blame themselves, even when their suffering is occasioned by the wrongful actions of others. We can become defined by the events of our past. An emotional wound can become a stronghold a negative entrapment that will grip your life and steer you towards depression, despair, and discouragement. And the pain that we do not deal with or heal from will continue to interfere with our ability to function and perform our daily activities. It can become that bad. So, we begin to see maladaptive patterns emerging, especially when the part happened in the, in, the, in the childhood period of our lives. The question is, are you willing to open up that area of your life and identify how the emotional baggage of the past hurts is hindering you from moving forward? This is one of the things you will get benefit from in the profit of pain cause a safe place where you can open up and identify how this is hindering you and how you can lay it down. We can overcome that hurt. We can overcome that painful experience. The question is, we don't keep quiet about it. We find a safe place to talk about it and we seek help and support. And this is a quote that I'd like to share with you. Emotional pain is not something that should be hidden away and never spoken about. There is truth in your pain. 
there is also growth in your pain, but it only happens when you first bring it to open, to the open in a safe environment. You, there is power in your pain. Your pain has a voice, your pain has a message, and your pain has a purpose. And my encouragement is that you don't waste the pain of your heartful experiences. Healing is possible. It requires you first to be willing to let go of past hurts. It requires you to be willing to bring that pain and hurt to God. You will need, of course, to find scriptures that will help you to let go of those hurts as you walk through your journey of healing. You will also be able to share your past hurts in a controlled environment with a specialist. But I want you to remember that letting go of past hurts takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. If we don't transform the pain, you will transmit it. Every emotional wound can create scurrying, denial, and perceived weakness. If we don't walk on that pain and transform it, we will transmit it to others. And that's why I said broken people break others. Hurting people hurt others. And it takes tremendous courage. And I agree. It takes tremendous courage for us to face what happens to us and allow our emotional wounds to heal. Your pain in its raw and unprocessed form remains yours. In its transformed version, it can become a treasure for others and for you too. Let me share some inspiring quotes that have helped me in the past. If you focus on the pain, you will miss the purpose. That was said by Dulcio Yeko. The pain, the shame of pain dies when it is exposed in safe areas, in a safe place. The shame of pain dies when it is exposed in a safe place. Pain does not have to be the last word on this earth. It is not that powerful. Your pain does not have to have the last word. You shouldn't let your pain have the last word. We shouldn't give pain that power to continue to control our lives and dictate our future. You are the health for all heat hurting, you're the healing hearts and healing mind. You are plenty when there is nothing. You're peace amongst all strife. This is what God can be to us when we admit, acknowledge our painful experience and we bring it to him. He becomes the health for us. He becomes our healing and our peace. It is in the quiet crucibles of our personal and private suffering that our noblest dreams are born and God's greatest gifts are given. Today, I can testify that it is in that quiet crucible of my pain, of my hurt, that what I am doing today was birthed. It was born in the place of pain. And so in a quick few minutes, I'm going to share with you my own journey with pain, just to give you an idea of where I am coming through, and then we'll be ready to open it up for conversation. Hallelujah. The first that I would say that I lost my daughter at 32 weeks as a stillbirth, and it was painful. For 20 years, I lived with a chronic disease that affected my lungs and my um, neuromuscular um, uh, junctions. I coughed nonstop every day for 20 years. I had significant challenges in the pursuit of my career, getting my PhD, be my job. Hurtful, painful experiences happened. And of course, significant challenges I had to endure, financial significant challenges because of the loss of the job and loss of uh, stable income as a result of my health challenges. 
For seven years, I was on supplemental oxygen. It means that I was homebound. There was nowhere, I, anywhere I want to go, I have to take with me an oxygen cylinder. For three years, I was on ventilation. I was unable to breathe for myself. If I go to sleep without putting on the ventilator, my, my lungs can stop breathing. And after going through 20 years of this pain, uh, seven years on oxygen, three years on ventilation, I had a lung transplant 10 years ago, April 2013. And because of the complications of the lung transplant, both my legs were amputated in uh, May 2013. All of that about 10 years ago, next month. And so I know the pain of loss. I know the pain of, of losing so many things, losing a child, losing my legs, losing my lungs, losing my job. I know how deeply that can hurt. And uh, just to show what it looks like for somebody who is oxygen dependent, I had to wear oxygen on my nose every day, every day uh, for seven years. And anywhere I go, I had to carry an oxygen tank with me. And this was me in the hospital after I, I had a lung transplant. That was what I looked like after the lung transplant. And then these legs had to go at the end of all that I had suffered. But in addition to those health challenges, I also had harsh words that broke me from within, that inflicted deep wounds on my heart. As a young teenager from someone I respected, as an adult from someone I expected, I respected, and I've had to embark on a journey of healing and forgiveness for me to heal in the innermost places. What did I discover? I found that my painful experiences have branded me with an acute sense of compassion and empathy. Today, I can comfort others in all their afflictions with the same comfort I have been comforted. The pressure of pain has squeezed out of me very latent and innate gift. And that's why today I'm a creative writer. And in the cave of my personal confinement and pain, I found my writing skills. My pain motivated me to go deeper into my key relationships and have very low motivation for superficial relationships. What more? Pain motivated me to prioritize my time and energy so that I can become focused on fulfilling my divine purposes. My experiences also caused me to seek the Lord more than ever before. My pain would have been in vain it has, if it has not become a gain for others today. I'm proud to say, and I'm thankful to go for the opportunity to use my pain to help others. Pain would teach you to remain in faith. All pain and full experiences produce lessons, deep lessons. And enduring and withstanding pain produces in us perseverance. You know, there's no way we can pay for perseverance. It comes from what we have endured. So there is purpose beyond the pain. Today, my pain has produced inspiring hope, ministry. It has produced beyond the pain coaching and counseling services. It has produced this online course, The Profit of Pain, which we have shared the link for you, with, uh, with you in the comment box. It has produced two books. It has produced two books. Um, grace in the Storms, The Living Proof, and 55 Chapters of Hope and Grace. So your pain can produce something that will benefit others in the long run. And so the profit of pain costs is one of the things that we are sharing with you. And it can be with group coaching or with a one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. And you will find the link to register for the Profit of Pain course so that you can learn more on how to let go of your pain 
and transform your pain to something that is meaningful. Beyond the pain, we also have a rich in lives. There's not a foundation that provides prosthetic limbs for amputees in, in Nigeria because I lost two legs. More than 162 amputees have received support. Beyond the Pain also is a business that is producing creations that are beautifying people's life. There is so much that can come out of a pain when we process them right and we heal from them. So these resources are available to you. You can have the one-on-one -on -one coaching services with me. You can have be a part of our Facebook uh, group, Purpose Beyond the Pain. You can join the group mentoring. And you can also take part in the Purpose be, uh, the Profit of Pain course. So, friends, you can simply can't afford to waste your pain. But your pain will be in vain if it does not transform to become a gain for others. Our painful experiences are never purposeless. We can go beyond our pain and find purpose through it and beyond it. Thank you for taking this time to listen to me. And now we're going to open the floor for questions and comments. And you can do so by um, 